Wow, I can't, you came on fast, girl. All right, let me grab you. I was going to say pull you. <laughs> what does it mean cancel? Did it send it? Wow, that was fast. Hey, I'm I'm good, you know. <laughs> How are you? You okay? I'm good. Eh. Um, um, you know, my week was insane and crazy and just one of those weeks where you just like wanna you know it's just crazy. Yeah, I'm sorry. How are you? I know you had a rough night at recently. I have had a rough patch. Yeah. A lot of death. Um, but I finally feel like I'm I'm coming up to the surface this week, which is good, right? Um, but yeah, thank you for asking. Death sucks. It does, especially, yeah. you know, when it's just, you know, especially when it comes on, like, out of nowhere, and it's just, you know, it's yeah. it's worse. I don't, I, I, you know, I don't think anybody's ever prepared for that, even when some people have long lives, and they say, oh, they had a very nice long life, and they were ready, and I just always feel like it doesn't really change the fact of how you feel, and, yeah, you know, but, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so I am so happy to have you on. Um, and for everybody who, who's tuning in, this is Jen Buff, and I am not even going to begin to like list your resume. So I'm going to <laughs> I'm gonna let you tell oh, no. how wonderful you are your bio and like she does like a, like I mean just the, like a lot of amazing things. And my brain, like, it just didn't absorb it all, so, it, like, to remember. So, I mean, I'm going to let Jen tell you a little bit about herself and what she does and just everything. Cause she just, she does a lot, and she's an amazing um, human. She she's, has become one of my favorite humans, and, I, you know, you guys should follow her. She's just absolutely awesome. So, um, tell us a little bit about you and your background and everything that you do. Okay. So, I... I'm a professional speaker, and I've been doing that for 24 years. And so I, I primarily speak sort of in the empowerment realm. Um, I've, I usually am all about the women power and, and getting women into spaces that they don't have access to because of, you know, <laughs> white, cis, hetero males that are sitting in all of those C-suite spots. And so my goal is to get as many women into those boardrooms, uh, into those C-suite spots, also into government positions of leadership. I've worked on three campaigns, three, three U.S. congressional campaigns, leading those campaigns, uh, working with a woman right now who's running for U.S. Senate in Georgia, who is amazing. And so I just really feel strongly about you know, having my voice heard. I also have a nonprofit and the nonprofit is to aid asylum seekers and help them on their journey of fleeing from, you know, life-threatening situations that are horrendous. The stuff I've seen is just insane. So I'm just sort of a warrior out here doing my best to fight the good fight and be on the right side of right. You know what I mean? You also have your show. You completely I left do. that girl over I, my place. I, and do. I, I had the pleasure of being on it. That's gonna come at some time, some 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 point. Watch Within the month. Yep, yep. So um, I've got yeah, the rate of the podcast and television show, which are, are virtually one of the same. But uh, yes, I had you on a guest in your show. I think you're up to bat like in the next few weeks. I'll be promoing yours. So yeah, yeah. Can't wait. That was a great conversation. I, I loved yeah. it. Um, I love to have like great conversations with good people and that inspiring and helping people, empowering women and just anybody. Just you know, it's just awesome. And I love connecting with people like yourself and I love everything that you do. I, I why did I not know that you have a nonprofit? Can you can you type that into the bottom so everybody can see it and do you have an Instagram page? I well I don't. I don't. Um, it was completely <laughs> underground. So when we started doing it, so I haven't been doing it this year. I have to make 
I'll just sort of paint a real quick picture. When it first uh, came about, this was about four, four or five years ago. It must have been five because it was during the time I was trying to kick Trump in the balls every day by letting as many people in and helping as many people as I could as they came over the border. That was kind of my way of protesting along with everything else I did, you know, but that was important. So I'm gonna guess that was about five years ago we opened it up and it's called All Hands AZ. And so it's allhandsaz.org. And so what we did, we, we actually contributed to helping 48,000 people come in and I, I would work directly, yeah, with ICE. It's not like I was like taking them over the border. I would work with ICE, take them into my cu custody, and we would feed them, clothe them, um, you know, pr provide translation services, travel, all the things to get them to their families. And so the org, though, was created to aid the churches because the churches are really the the ones who are providing the most beautiful care. Our, our Latino churches that are here where I live, they did a beautiful job and what they didn't need to be worried about was you know getting someone to like bring clothes or drive someone to an airport or whatever so my goal was not to take center stage it was to provide all of the services that they need so that they could just do what they do beautifully and i could get all of the people into kind of help and, and support so since the biden administration has sort of changed things we used to do a lot of legislation to to say to the government, you know, like, we want you to take this over. We want you to step in. And they did this time. And so the, the administration has now a nonprofit that brings the families in. I worked with families. And the single adults go to an org here, and they are amazing, and they've got great support. So they've got it under control. And so what I've done is I've sort of sent my entire volunteer list and all of my volunteers to be in that space because – you know, it's a big org and it's, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. Like we got what we wanted on some level, you know? And so I haven't been doing it this year, but up until the end of last year, it was still active. So. Uh, you're you're yeah. just, you're, um, if you ever do anything like that again, or you get it started, like I totally want to be involved and help any way I can. I love, I love that. I love oh, it. Awesome. It's just amazing. Um, so, it's, you know, even though it's towards the end of October and, you know, here's the, here's the one thing. And I, and I, I would love your opinion on a lot of it because you just have this insight that I think it is going to be very unique and different. I mean, everybody has that, um, you know, everybody has different insights when it comes to bullying and hate and the LGBT community, uh, LGBT, okay, I can't talk today, LGBT community. And we also work and partner with Face Forward LA, who is in um, here in LA. And uh, we partner with them, Clint Crawford Foundation. He's also one of our advocates. Um, we partner with a few people and, um, you know, we try to encompass all forms, even when it has different names like domestic violence and then suicide aware. Mental health, we touch on just like check-ins and stuff like that and mentoring. And, you know, we do a lot here. I mean, I know you know a lot of what we do. But, um, you know, October is Bullying Prevention Month. And one of the things is, is I, I really try to push that I, I don't want to, I don't want to like just make big splashes for Bullying Prevention Month. We, we try to be more active. But this year I was like, you know what? I don't really want to be more active because I really want people to understand that these things, even though they have special days, special weeks, special months, we need to be doing it all the time, all, like all year, not just hooray for the month. We did all this cool stuff and now we're going to like slow down. So I, I, I decided to change maybe possibly sending out that message, even though I preached, you know, you know, let's always, even though I would post my graphic and I would have more shows and I would do certain things or a charity fundraiser, I always felt like I still want to, I, I want to change that up because even though I push the message that we need to do it all the time, 365 days a year, um, I, you know, I, I wanted to change things up a little bit. So I don't know if you, I mean, have you ever... I'll start with this because it's always a question I start with. Have you ever encountered bullying yourself, whether it was within when you were younger, school, work, family? I mean, the bullying comes from anywhere. So have you ever have you ever had encountering with, you know, with that type of behavior? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think we all have. Well, maybe not all. I guess that's too broad of a brush. But yeah, I didn't I didn't get out of childhood without being bullied. And 
you know, I even think about going into the corporate space. I was pretty young. I started working at a startup when I was 18. I was actually just turning 19, but young. And I was going to college. And I remember getting, after I'd worked like for five years in, in Southern California, where I'm from, and then went out to Arizona, where I am now, I remember getting into that office and being hated, just being hated. I was the person that got the job. They wanted their friend to get it. And I remember as an adult thinking, what is going on? Like, we're adults. I'm 26. This is insanity, you know? And um, so I'd be surprised if people say they get out of life without some bullying. I feel like the bullies were probably bullied when they were kids or in their home or in some space, right? I mean, even though they're doing the atrocious acts, I have to believe that that there was something happening somewhere. So. You know, I want to. I want to say all of us don't get out alive without being bullied, but I guess that's too broad of a brush. You know. Yeah. No. I mean, I know. You know, like I said, all the things that you do that are just, you know, um, you're just an. I mean, you're an inspiring person, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I I think it's very important to show that even people that do all the amazing things that you do, and your your presence on social media, and I mean, we met on Clubhouse, and yeah. I mean. It adored you right away and like i'm, I'm gonna try to get you to move back to california I'm yeah gonna... listen uh, the door's open i'm gonna <laughs> or are you come and visit or i come visit you but sorry yeah. i have a going crazy all over the house but okay. um I, I think it's important to show that like there's no limits on what happens with bullying suicide mental health um domestic violence you know i i i i People think that it's only, oh, it's only this, this, you know, it's, it's minorities, it's the LGBT community, it's so many groups, like, they are, there is people that are more, um, it's more accessible, that they might be higher targets, I mean, that's, we could say that, but people think, oh, well, this person's pretty, or they're famous, or they're a celebrity, let me explain something to you, I work with a lot of people in entertainment, I have for years, and I built beautiful, good relationships with them. And I have to say that I've not, I don't think there's one of them that have said that they have not been bullied, whether it was in Hollywood at mm -hmm. work or in their family or friends or when they were kids. Yeah. So it's not just, oh, you're beautiful, so you're not going to get bullied and oh, this, that. So, you know, I think it's important to show that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not happy and glad that you got bullied but I, I was i'm glad that you were able to show that side that like hey mm -hmm. even though the amazing things and and i grew up and i do you know and i'm just this empowering woman to to people and women supporting women i i've been there what do you um you know it's a lot of so i mean have you ever had i mean everybody i think especially during the pandemic i i think and feel has been hit by bullying in some form online have you encountered that at all online or not really i i have not online um i've had you know i and now that i'm saying it i don't want to minimize it because i've had some really shitty comments made uh like, in like back channel stuff you know and but i wouldn't say i don't want to I don't want to minimize that because it's shitty. Like any way you slice it, people should never be speaking to each other the way they are. And yet I will say that it wasn't any more than me. Like, well, let me just say back when I was, you know, really knee deep in the asylum seeker stuff, our lives were at risk. We had these, these people who were anti-immigration and all of that showing up with guns. We eventually had to get the ACLU to literally take them to court because they walked around with guns in the space we were in threatening and we won the case and they were not allowed to show up anymore so i say this to you because i had to really go into this sort of underground space and we never could do anything online that was the thing we couldn't put anything online and this is what i started to tell you and i realized i got caught up you know on something else but anyway i we had to do everything off of Facebook, off of Instagram, off of the online, you know, social channels because they were being infiltrated and they were finding out we had to move every single day. We had to go to a different church so that these people who were showing up with their guns didn't know what our schedules were. So we had to move every day. So it was literally like this underground network 
that we had to use. Well, someone figured out who I was. I don't know how. And I, I got a really threatening message saying that they were outside my window. They watched me eat dinner. Um, you know, I'm self-employed, so it wasn't like they could say they were going to get me fired. But it was, it was still creepy. There was no picture. It was all threats. It was, but I say this to you because while I don't want to minimize it, people can be assholes. You know what I mean? People can be just major jerks. And I think that the quickest thing I did was just block the person, you know, and, and it was, it was pretty much done. So I haven't, I haven't been bullied to the extent that you're talking about the kind of harassment that I know you get that I know some of my trans friends have gotten. I mean, it's, it is so dangerous. It's so totally dangerous, you know? It's very sophisticated. Mm. And, you know, I'm so glad they were just, you know, um, bluffing. Mm -hmm. But I have to be careful because these people are like, they dig on people. They find stuff. Public records, of course, are out yeah. there. They're willing to spend money on strangers that they don't know. Like, if they don't like you, they, they will look to try to destroy people. Yeah. And it's like, I've had them dox me with, like, with a public personal thing. that It's like, if I wanted that online, I'd put it. Obviously, mm -hmm. I never would. But that's not your place to do that. And then it would be like, oh, uh, they're telling people I'm bullying them in a DM. I'm like, why? Because I called you out on bullying activity. So that makes me a bully. I'm like, you're not like, mm -hmm. you're not is that people don't really know what bullying is. It's like, I had a fight with somebody. That's not bullying. I had a fight with my spouse. Right. I had a fight. I told off my friend, I, I, I cursed out this person. It's like, that's not bullying. We all have yeah. those moments. <laughs> like, yeah. that's, you know, um, it, it's a consistent, really horrific and horrible behavior. And it's not, it's grown like into this sophisticated network and it's it's scary as hell. And I hate to say, okay. hate to even, you know, say it, but it's the truth. It's like grown, and somebody made a comment one time on one of my posts that it is. It, he was so right. It has grown into this sophisticated network of like mob rule. If you have a different opinion, you say something that somebody doesn't like, you're trying to get canceled depending on what you do. Yeah. If you're any public eye or, you know, impl you know, doing whatever it is that you do online and you have a following, they, they go after you, they dox you, they bully you, they get their friends to you, block them and doesn't do it. And then they use 50 burner accounts. And they, I, I mean, I recently found a page where they are bullying a public figure, but then they're also got one post on me and I'm like, well, this post had nothing to do with what you think it had to do with. And you know, it's like, it's like the, they also make up delusional things that are lies in their head when they're spreading rumors and lies about people. And that can really hurt people. And it's like, they yes. don't really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, a lot of the times, um, and sometimes people are just mean and they're bullies, but a lot of the times it starts in the home. They're learning it from somewhere. They're unhappy. They're a victim of something. Yes. It doesn't okay. It's like with mental health. We have our triggers we have our moments but that does not make it okay to go around acting like a jerk yeah. or being bully and say well i have mental health issues okay you're gonna have your issues you're gonna have a ptsd moment you know depression anxiety that's fine but yeah. let's make excuses and say well i it's okay that i had a moment still apologize still you know people will understand because we all, a lot of us have those type of situations but mm -hmm. I think it's important to stop, you know, people are trying to use things inappropriately, words like homophobic, transphobic, xenophobic, all these words are being overused to the point where they're not, they don't even mean anything anymore. Right. I hope you agree, but I mean, to me, I've seen oh, it sure. on Twitter. I mean, are you on Twitter? Because Twitter's just like a dumpster fire. Yeah, it is. And I have to say that while it is a dumpster fire, it also is where I tend to find information first also and and i've you know for me i'm i'm really really intentional in who i follow i'm not just following a gazillion people i mean yes i have a lot of people i follow but it's very intentional so yeah it is a dumpster fire and it is vile if you're out there in any way and and you know the crap they say is yeah it's here's the thing that gets me and i i don't know it's i may be way overstating this but i'm just gonna throw it out there 
I don't know when it got this bad or where this like vile bravado or, you know, like this manufactured machismo comes from. But the only thing I can pinpoint it to is the internet. But then I think back to like when the Dixie Chicks were canceled and they were canceling with stepping on records and burning shirts, you know, that were from the concert or whatever. But the ramping up, like the level that it's gotten to, the only thing I can pinpoint it to is this anonymity that they have behind a screen and the power to dox, the power to impact where someone works, the power to create fear. But it's, um, it's, I, I know I keep saying this, but I really truly mean it. It's so dangerous. I mean, we're talking yeah. about lives, people dying, you know, people, people taking, taking their own life. People, the amount of people that have taken their life. Yes. Suicide is higher than people can imagine from cyberbullying or bullying in school. I mean, eight year olds because of their sexuality, because they know when they, they knew when they were eight. I read, when I see these stories, I mean, it's heartbreaking. And it's, yes, it's of course, you know, for everybody too, but like an eight year old, an eight year old baby, they're babies. And the fact that that's in their mind because they're getting so bullied that they don't, they can't think of wanting to live anymore because they don't, they can't handle it. We're not, we're, we're, there's not, we're not do. we need to do better there. Like some, like the schools are sweeping things under the rugs and things are not getting handled the way, not every school. And I, I don't want to include, I never like to say all of anything because it's not. Yeah, right. But you know, there's a lot of schools not doing anything, unfortunately, and it's, it, that's happens and the downfall. And then they're like, oh, you want to sue us? And oh, you want to do that? And it's like, oh, well, you didn't do anything, you know? Um, and I've heard so many stories of people like, well, I told my teacher, well, I told the principal, when I did this, when I did this, I changed schools and put in the other school. And then, and it's like, it's like they don't want to acknowledge it and do their jobs. That's what they're there for, to protect the children. I mean, that's why right. they're right. there. Educate and teach, yes. But they're also there to protect the kids while they're there. Yes, I know. I know. And, and then on the other side of this, we've got these student resource officers who are immediately starting this school-to-prison pipeline for kids of color, you know, whether it's, it's a, you know, Latino kid or a black kid. I mean, it's like everything is upside down. I mean, you just saw the person in Riverside in California where you live, the teacher who had on the native headdress and was making all of these absurd noises. I mean, like, what is going on? What, where are the adults in the room? The responsible adults in the room? You know what I mean? It's just horrific, horrific. I do know what you mean. And that's what I, I say, like, if we don't, if we have bullies and irresponsible adults, how are we supposed to get through to the children? Mm -hmm. Because they're mimicking and they're seeing it and they're going, well, they're doing it or, you know. And then, you know, if you, if you try to go to another adult to tell on another adult, it's just, you know, well, you did the, it's just, you know, it's a, it's really, really sad. I mean, and the, the online world has made it like 15 times worse. And pandemic just, I mean, doubled it again because the pandemic, everything just became mob rule. It's still, if you have an opinion that's not with the masses, it's like fire torches. Yeah. And, they, and you know, this, you know, a lot of people are speaking out on cancel culture. I was recently, I, I actually watched comedy special i don't know if you heard what was going on with that and oh, yeah. everybody about it so i was like let me watch it because at this point i was curious what the uproar was yep what are your thoughts on cancel culture and do you think that it's ever i mean of course i feel like if it's warranted when it's like okay this person is domestic violence like of course or you know uh, they're 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 racist or you know you find out something horrific or horrible that they did or that they've done i mean i'm not saying people can't be forgiven because that's not what i i believe in and they can't better themselves like when people dig into like i mean how many how many public figures oh my god they did this 15 years ago 
but that's doesn't mean that's who they are now. Mm -hmm. And so, like, what are your, what are your thoughts on on these type of situations and cancel culture? When do you think that if you do think that it's appropriate, or if it's not, what do you think should be done when there are mm -hmm. horrific circumstances? And yeah, you know, so basically, like, what do you think? Because I kind of feel like it's out of like you can say boo and like everybody wants to cancel you now. Yeah, I know. And it's so, so I've jumped on, on many a bandwagon when someone's being racist, you know, that's a conversation because I'm a, a DM in my speaking, I'm a DEI trainer. So I speak on diversity, equity, inclusion, and I jump on those bandwagons fast because I am not going to sit back and, and, you know, pretend that the person is okay. They just said what they did. And, you know, I, I will. And I, I do put my dollars in, in certain spaces to make sure that my money matters, my vote matters, all those things. But do I think it's gotten out of hand? Yeah, I do. And of course, if I'm going to be completely transparent, of course, I get pissed off when it's something that is usually from the opposite side of my opinion that I feel like is unwarranted. So that's why it's such a weird slippery slope, right? Because when it's not of my value systems, my values are purely about taking care of people. That's it. Like the minute you start, yep. The minute you start putting your money, your laws, your, you know, your values in front of human life, like that, I got a big problem. And so I usually stand on this side where there is something or someone being canceled for something really shitty they did or, you know, like raping girls or whatever. You know what I mean? Like things that to me are really valid. But then I get pissed when the other side valid, does it. Yeah, absolutely valid is, is not even yeah. a question. Yeah, but, but I get pissed when the other side does way, it. My yeah, there's like way too many people getting canceled for like, oh my God, you said something 20 years ago and you're, you're I don't different. like that either. Yeah. Or okay, you had a moment on social media or somebody mistook your words because words are mis taken out of context, they're misconstrued. I've had it happen to myself. Mm -hmm. People think, you know, a lot of the times we'll say something and like we'll post our moods. And mm -hmm. it, 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 by human nature, we're like, oh my God, like if, if I had a fight with somebody or a disagreement or like we, we all will start thinking, is that about us? Is, is that post yeah. about us? Yeah. But, and I always try to say, never assume, let's ask first, because, you know, we could be wrong. And, you know, you know, I'm, I've always been guilty of posting, like, I'm very big about my feelings being out there more since, because I always used to push them down and it's unhealthy and it's not good for your mental health. And, I you know, too. yeah, it makes you very angry. I was a very angry kid and teenager by doing that, but I didn't have anybody or in any way to express it. So it was just me telling a lot of jokes and laughing and smiling. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. just kind of threw it. And then later on to be like, yeah. so, you know, there's a danger in that. Um, I will say this though, Dana, before we move, I got to say this because, mm -hmm. and this is more of a question towards you. And I think we're on the same page here is that obviously not for the big things. I am not going to cancel my cancel. You know what I mean? Like if you do something that's so out there, you're done. Like you're never getting my dollars. You're never getting my views. You're never getting my digital currency again, period. Really? But there's this other side of it that I do believe that people screw up. And I do believe that people, we sometimes get it wrong. And I think that people do have the ability to make amends, do better and continue to fight on the right side of right. I've got a friend of mine who I really, really value. And I've been walking her through some stuff and I shouldn't say it like that. She's doing the work. I just happen to be on the other end of some of the, the venting or conversations, you know, where there's been emotion shared. And so what I just keep saying to her is keep showing up, keep doing all the right things, just keep showing up. And she's devastated because it's impacting her business and these are lifelong friends. And this is her community she's lived in. And she's like, I swear I didn't, I swear I didn't, I swear I didn't. And I said, just keep showing up. Like that's the way that you've got to, you know, stand in your truth because we I don't know that that's fair, right? Yeah, I mean, we are on the same page. I agree with you. I mean, unless it was something completely, oh my God. Yes, of course. You know, and it was 
buried secret, you know? Right. But if somebody was just young, silly, and we sometimes we do stupid things, we say dumb things, you know, especially when social media first started. I think my first tweet was like, it, it, it was totally unrelated. It was more funny, but it was ridiculous. My first tweet was like, this is my first twit. I didn't even know it was tweet. I called it a twit. So, like, you know, I mean, I think it's funny and I laugh about it, but I don't know what the heck I said like 10 years ago. I know I didn't yeah. say anything, oh, my God, horrendous. But, you know, we yeah. say, you know, they always say, like, don't drink in text. You know, it's like, don't drink in social media either. Yeah. But, you know, we all are silly. And, you know, I, I think that it's fine. I think we have to work. You know what it is? I don't believe and feel that we're allowed to be human beings anymore. Mm. They've taken that away, in a way. Mm. Like, if, if you're a human being, it's you're canceled, you're getting bullied, you're, it's a lot of grandstanding. It's a lot of, it's a lot of grandstanding in people just that really don't care about causes. A lot of the time it's because they don't like a person mm -hmm. or they don't like, I, I hate to say this, even with, in, in television or movie, they don't like their, the character. They don't like the person they have. Or and if it's a non-public figure, people are just going down strangers' throats and, you know, oh my God. It, it's just going after people that they don't even know. And yeah. I, I, when that came, a huge, like, I mean, uh, such mm -hmm. a pop do. Like, it's like walking up, it's like, would you walk up into the street and start yelling at a stranger if we all had signs of how we felt that day? Yeah. Or, okay, so I stand up right. for this because, I mean, so you're just going to run, run up into the street and say, like, here's my reply to what your sign says. Yeah. And say, no, we're not going to do that because that's ridiculous. Right. But we're being, we're having the ability to be a human being and mess up or have, mis or make mistakes or have a moment. Like, I know people that have gotten so bullied that, yes, they responded and they didn't respond fabulously. And we've all probably been there. And, you know, you get to a certain boiling point where it kind of just f goes over, you know? And I think we all have a right to get to a point where we kind of, well, that's enough, you know? And you just get to it. And, you know, you could apologize. I think, I just think everybody's too hard on everybody. There's no chances given. There's no understanding. There's no compassion. There's no, okay, this is really not that big of a deal. It's right away. They're... they're <laughs> <laughs> They're dropping words around her. She's, my puppy is very, very feisty. Um, she's teething, so she's she's not happy. But um, we need to start letting people be human again, and I really feel that that's being taken away. Mm. I mean, I mean, I, I that's how I feel the best way to word it for me is. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing too. You know, life is messy, right? Humans are messy. Like, yeah. we, we mess up all the time. And I can look back at my own life, even though I'm a warrior in my fight. Like, I, every day, am, I am ready to jump in and make a difference. And I can look back at who I was when I was 18. Man, I screwed up. I mean, I can remember the moments when I screwed up bad. And, mm -hmm. and I thank goodness that I'm wasn't canceled or that I learned from it or that I didn't hurt anybody and that it didn't continue, you know, the, the bad attitude or behaviors or, or comments or whatever. I mean, I've screwed up. And so I say sort of in solidarity with you that we do have to be human, but I, there's another side of this, the fight that I'm a part of or the side that I'm on in this, all of this, is that people gotta be called out. Like, I, I'm i not okay with how flagrant the bad behaviors come and become, and I'm not okay. So that's, that's for me, you know, like, I'm such a warrior spirit that I really feel like, you know, hey, you're gonna keep doing that, you're gonna get dragged. And I don't mean for making one mistake obviously, right? I'm talking about people who are just heinous and, and continually. Yeah. And so, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm kind of of two minds about it, but yes, I get you. And I fully understand what you're saying because we are losing, we are losing that humanity. And as my friend Desiree always says, is that the reason that none of this works is because no one cares about humanity. I mean, the reason all this is happening, the reason people are hurting is because we've forgotten what it's like 
to have true humanity. And she always says that the answer to everything is just getting back to that, that beautiful core of humanity, you know, and that's my point. Yeah, there it is. No, but I actually agree with your, your two sided theory. I actually agree with it. I'm not saying I, I don't believe in calling out just, Hey, I want to call you out. Cause I don't like you or you, you made a mistake. Yeah. If it's, a, if it's a pattern or they yes. did something like horrible, like when we were talking about, you know, um, abuse, rape, you know, stalking, harassment, you know, you, you have something that you're doing that's illegal and it's horrible or, you know, mm -hmm. fine to talk about. It. And I think it's fine to, you know, I don't want to join the mob tiki torches. I want to no. do it my way. I don't want to join a band. I want to do my individual way like you are. Like you have your way of fighting in your warrior. I have my warrior spirit, the way of doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. going to go down to that level that these yeah. people go down to and it's like okay but you're gonna end up looking no better and i'm sure we've all done it like i mean we all have done it where like i said we're human and i mean i can think back to things i mean we've all hurt people in our lives i think it probably you know and like i said again we're human and it's okay to admit that and you know but i think a lot of people are afraid to even say anything anymore because you'll get classified as another word that's thrown around in a positively yeah but positively like, oh my gosh, you said you disagree with me, you're a bully. It's like, no. Yeah. But I will also say this that it's being don't you think sorry, go ahead. I I No, I was just like you had a fight with somebody online. Oh my god, you're a bully. No. <laughs> right. And that's it. And that is exactly where I was gonna go. So this is perfect because it's the overuse of words that don't fit. We see this in mental health all the time. People overuse all the diagnoses. And they throw them around like, you know, like candy. And it's, it's not okay because we're really minimizing something that A, is really hurting someone, is really a struggle of life, and it's threatening to their life, right? And B, you're minimizing behavior by using it so flagrantly when in fact, you know, there, there are people who are justifiably possibly out of control, possibly you know, inflicting harm with their behavior. But by using all these phrases, I don't care what it is. You said it earlier with homophobia and I see it with racism all the time. You know, we see it with these medical terms. It's, we've got to be more intentional about what we're saying and how we're using our phrases and, and how we're using our voice to make sure that we are doing things the right way and not just jumping onto the mob mentality, jumping in because it's cool and and all of that like you mentioned the the special um that was recently on um the comedian can't think of his name right now Dave but Chappelle. like i'm i have no part in that conversation like i feel very strongly about that this is not my conversation i know damn well what side i'm on and so do you but i am not going and i say that because it's not my place to get into that fight and I believe what I believe just from excerpts. And people say to me, well, how can you have an opinion? Well, I don't have, I mean, this is inside my inner circle. And I, I say because, I, because I'm tapped into my humanity, but I'm not gonna discuss it and jump on the bandwagon because I know who I wanna protect in this fight, if you will, it's not my fight to have. And if more people could just do that and recognize it's not your fight to have. It's not your opinion that's needed right now. Again, this is also great because there are things we all need to speak out against, right? I mean, I am a firm believer there are things that we need to speak out against. But I just think that, I think we need to be more intentional. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree 100% with everything you said. Like, somebody even mentioned a comment here, Sonia, I feel like calling someone racist when they really aren't degrading for people who are really racist. So it's like, this is what I mean. Like, these words are thrown around inappropriately because they mistook something somebody said. Or, like I said, xenophobic, homophobic, transphobic, oh, narcissist. And, like, I'm not saying I've never used the terms, but... Oh, sure. You know, like we used to talk, like, I mean, I, people are, everybody, even friends, friendships, trying to diagnose people thinking they know, oh, you have this, I Googled this, you have this. So I go, I feel like, I, let me go to just the doctor. Like, stop telling me what's wrong with me, making me feel worse. You know, I don't mind people's opinions and thoughts, but like when you have people throwing down, like kind of really hardly what they feel is wrong with you or 
or making you feel like, oh, you're, 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 you're crazy or you're this, or you're that. And it's like, stop using all these words just because you think like, okay, I'm smart and I've done a lot of research. So that means I can use these words. No, it doesn't because we have to stop self-diagnosing. We have to stop using these words. All these, it's great to have quotes, but I see a lot of these pages that are psych saying psychological things that are not true. Psychologists mm -hmm. are influencers that are going on there saying psychology says no psychology doesn't say that and the psychologist mm -hmm. and then they're calling the psychologist a bully and it's like no why because they're calling out people that are going online and dangerously saying psychology says if you do this this that's not what we should be listening to i don't want to listen to anybody that doesn't have a certificate a degree or something it's something that makes you qualify yeah. to yeah. be saying these things yeah. And I, on Twitter today, I was like, I don't, I saw this like popular, popular page that puts like, you know, like they just put like good feelings, like tweets out. And I said, like, see, I don't agree with this. You're saying if you're depressed, you're living in the past. If you, this, you anxiety. I said, no, people don't live in the past just because they're depressed. I've had depression since I was 15 and I, and I wasn't living in the past when I was 15. I mean, that's not why people have depression. That doesn't mean, oh, well, hey, it just sometimes hits you like a brick for no reason. Absolutely. And anxiety, too, and lots of things. And it's like, so, like, these things that people are saying, I'm like, this is mental health. Stop talking about mental health. Stop talking if you, about mental health. If it's your opinion, that's fine. Say it's your opinion. Do not post it like it's a fact or you're saying yeah. it the strong way where like people are looking at and saying oh my gosh yes this is so true and then they're just all over the place and it's making mental health worse yeah. and boom and yeah. every the mental health has a lot of bullying surrounding it too so and it destroys mental health i mean when i had the cyber bullying for a year and a half that just you know took me out for the count for a while and then my mental health just kind of was pretty like all over the place with the pandemic and losing Bella and so many things, which I know, you know, uh, a lot of it, but like so many things coming in and when I hit the wall, like that's the last thing I needed. So I was just like tanking, you yeah. know? Yeah. And it took a while to recover. So yeah, I totally agree with you hundred percent. Like there's, I say it all the time, like stop nonchalantly throwing these words around to people. They especially don't know that's it but not to people you know either yeah i was i was listening to a room on clubhouse where we met and it was really fascinating to it was okay so the room was ask a narcissist or ask a a, a real narcissist anything <laughs> and it was fascinating how many people came with their my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my bit. It was all around all the emotion, right? That we've all, you know, I, like I said, thank God I've grown up because I've used all these phrases too, you know, flagrantly and, and irresponsibly and I've done the things too. But to hear him talk about it, by the way, he is a hypnotherapist and super cool and transparent guy, like way smart, way cool. But he would be like, no, 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 no. You know, like it's, we have, we have made this into a, a word that we use if someone doesn't want us instead of recognizing that this is a real, you know, this is a real diagnosis that people are really struggling with a, like he says, you know, there are things that I do and he goes, do you, you know, do you know how hard it is to be aware? That you do these things that you you know it's this isn't flagrant like this isn't cool but this is what i got and this is the way my brain works like this is what you know so it was a fascinating room to be a fly on the wall in because so many people were coming in with my girlfriend this she sounds like a nerd no she doesn't sound like a narcissist actually you know well, I, think, well, no, I think we're probably all narcissists well here's the thing that i feel and again this is my opinion but i did i do have a degree in psychology i did study cool. it but you know i mean we all have the capability to be all these things mm -hmm. we all have the capability to be narcissist in some form and i'm sure that we all have been narcissistic mm -hmm. a trait of narcissism or you know, being, being 
narcissistic uh, hey he, like, you know whether it was years ago or you know having a conversation or we had a fight with somebody and you know did a narcissistic trait or characteristic fly out or was I in a you know narcissistic moment I mean I think we all have that capability to be to fit that description in my opinion sure. it's Matter, but but it also is a real there's a difference between a natural thing that we all have the capability of being and be having actual narcissistic personality disorder yes it's a real thing that's it that's it the difference between the two you know so but here we go again what, minimizing right minimizing right. something that's really really devastating for people i mean you know them their their circle the people that you know are possibly um in, interacting with them and we're minimizing again because we're just calling everybody a narcissist and that was what really hit me listening is that here we go i mean it's just everywhere this this irresponsible use of language you know and and that is what we can change that's what we can be responsible for like i think that that Sonia said earlier that she's harder on herself than anyone else. Like, I get that. Oh my gosh. I, I have misgendered people who I know and it just, and I, I wanted to die. Like I wanted to die because it, it's just that when you love someone, you want to do everything you can to make sure that they are supported and seen and all of that. I've made mistakes, but the key is it's, it's being really conscious of, who you are, what you're contributing, and what you can change in any given moment, right? And I think that's what we can change. Like we can't change, you know, the assholes who are out there who are are hell bent on hurting, who are hell bent on destroying, who are hell bent on on really pushing fear because that's what's driving. That's the fuel, right? Is creating fear in another person. But what I can change is what I do, and that's what I have to work on every day because I can't contribute in a really flagrant sort of irresponsible way that could be mis misconstrued too, right? So, I mean, we all have this little part to play. I'm not saying we don't go after the, the bullies also, like, I mean, obviously, but I just think that we all have a part to play in this on some little level, you know, to make sure that we're, we're doing the right things for humanity. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and like you said, again, I agree with you 100%. We, we think a lot alike, and that's another thing, I, you know, I love. And I love connecting with people like that when you just, yeah. you know, but, I mean, it's okay to agree to disagree, too. And people don't think that, like, oh, my God, we can't be friends. We disagreed on mm -hmm. something. You know, or, <laughs> you know, oh, my gosh, we have to have a fight. We disagree. I mean, a yeah. lot of times I, I truly try to connect with people where you do, you are on this the same page with a lot of things. But... You know, if somebody has, oh, oh, they have a different political opinion than me, I'm not going to say, like, oh, my God, like, they're a wonderful person. Be like, oh, my gosh, you know, you're a wonderful person, but we disagree there. Okay, well, you know, we can't be. No, I don't do that. I, I want amazing people in my life. I want people that become lifelong friends in my life. I don't want, you know, fair weather friends. I mean, who wants that? You know, I mean, I'm getting, I mean, when you're younger, it's different. As you get older, I kind of feel like people throw people away too quickly these days. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know if. Well, I think it's lazy activism, isn't it? I mean, we all are here to make a difference and to protect humanity and to support people when they're not being treated with equity, right? And they don't feel they belong. It's our job to make sure as human beings that we take care of our family. I mean, that's really how I look at it. And when I choose to not be friends with someone from high school because they're a Trumper or they are putting crappy posts up that are misogynistic or homophobic. I mean, really, it's easy for me to just unfollow them. But the real activism is when I stay and I send them a message and I say, hey, what's going on? You good? Hey, I noticed that post that didn't sound like you. Everything good over there? What's going on with you? That's what activism is. And all of this canceling back to that is really lazy activism. Right? I do understand for the big offenses. I, I just, I know I keep saying that because I no, want to clarify it. Yeah. But I think if we're going to show up, you know, the lowest hanging fruit is actually the people that you've known a long time who actually know your character, they know your heart, they know your history. 
and the, and so many people are walking away from the lowest hanging fruit that we would actually have influence with because it seems like, well, I'll never change them. And I get it. Listen, they don't align with my values. I'm not friends with them anymore. I totally get that. Like not everybody deserves to be in your circle, but we do have this low hanging fruit with people that we've had longstanding relationships with where we have great amounts of influence to have those conversations and they don't have to be ugly. They don't have to be fireworks and, you know, caustic. So yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. I just, you know, um, I feel like we've just, I don't know. I feel like from my, my, my generation, I'm like, I always say, and you know, nobody believes me, but like, I'm going to be 43 years old. Like I came from a different type of generation. And I don't know when I think back in my childhood, things were just so very different. I, I, I just, I don't get, I mean, I didn't have social media. We didn't have these fancy yeah. cell phones, beepers and pay phones. And we actually okay. talked, we picked up the phone, we hung out, we were outside all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're becoming like a lot of the technology. I love it, but we're becoming very lazy. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the one thing I want to, you know, go back to is like, when we were talking about the calling out, like now, we always stress speak out and stand up here and, and you know in fact you know that's the thing of the ig tv series yeah. but you know i also say like there's times to ignore and just block and just you know don't put your energy in until you have to pick and choose but i mean when people make you feel like and i and i've been around that when people make you feel like no you just gotta ignore everything and it's like yeah but you don't want to ignore people just like stepping on you constantly and no way really when it's really bad it's like no i don't really want to ignore that well when you know and a lot of people well, when you're feeding them yes you are feeding them yes you're feeding them your they they want to your response they want to get to you i get all that and i don't disagree with it but i think that the more we stay silent this it's how, how are we doing the work if we just keep saying so what are your thoughts on like calling bullies out do you feel they it should be a block and ignore and then it's on a case-by-case -case basis or do you think it's like, oh my gosh, we're we're just feeding into what they want by giving them the attention? What are your thoughts on that when it like, you know, um, the bullying aspect of it? Well, that's kind of the slippery slope I was talking about earlier, you know, that there are times that I'm really glad that these people who are, you know, Jolly Good Ginger is a great example. Uh, Laura Clary is another great example. These people are are putting stuff out there, fighting the good fight. They're Instagram influencers, TikTok influencers, you know, I mean, we're talking about, you know, the million dollar club and, and the million follower club and the stuff they show people saying is so, it's so, so egregious. I mean, it is so offensive and I don't care who you are. It's just downright horrid and I'm okay with them showing names. I've, I've emailed you before and said, put their name out. This is absurd put their name out. So I feel like, I feel like it's case by case, but you have to know the warrior in me is like, you know, put, I want to put my foot down and speak up. And, but I also want to say that I don't, I don't scream at everybody. I don't even scream a lot, period. But I, if I go to rallies, if I go to, you know, sit in, stand in, whatever it is, you're not going to hear me over there with the opposite side. And I saw you, Sonia say that, and I think you're cool too, by the way, even though we're not on the same side, I thought that was cool. Um, but I don't, I would never go up to an opposing side and just scream at them. Like I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, one, I'm not gonna change anyone by screaming at them, but two, like what am I really doing here, right? However, I just went to court for a friend of mine who was at a rally, someone fell in the street and she stood up in front of a car and put her hands in front of the car because the car was just going to, didn't see, must not have saw the person and she had to stop the car. Well, she got pulled into court for, you know, obstructing the roadway and blah, 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 blah. And the judge asked her, knowing that you are here after this many court dates, would you do things differently? And my friend said, absolutely not. When someone's life's in danger, I will never ever sit back and allow that to happen. I will never allow someone to be hurt on my watch. And the judge was like, boom, 
you're getting the book thrown at you. So I have a, I have an opinion about how far I go based on how how much at risk someone is, right? But I'm not going to sit around screaming at everybody because virtually I'm screaming at myself in the mirror. That's kind of the way I look at it, you know, it's just not worth it. Yeah, I always say like with kids, like if you scream at your kids, like they're going to look at you like, huh? Yeah. What is that teaching? Sit down and teach them. Yeah. Talk to them. Like screaming and or throwing a shoe at their head or whatever people do down there. I mean, I don't know. I'm just mm -hmm. like, you know, like spanking them on the bottom, you know, and all that stuff. I just kind of feel like, but show them the right from wrong, lead by example. They mimic a lot of the times kids. Uh, you know, they learn a lot by mimicking and they seeing, wa seeing and watching and watching and seeing and, and then they do it or they say it because they listen. And I mean, they're like, okay. and I just don't see where that gets what, you know, you're not, you're not teaching. They're not learning anything. They're not learning a lesson in that. They're just going, okay, ouch, or they're crying or you're screaming at them. And then they think, well, that's going to get them to not doing again. And I'm like, I don't really think that that's going to get them anywhere because then they do later on down the road and you're screaming again. Yeah. And you find yourself constantly screaming. Obviously, something's not working. So I'm right. just not the things that works. Like sometimes when I was younger, younger, my friends would be like, scream, how come my kids behave when they're with Aunt Dana? And I'm like, because I don't do what you do. I was like... If they start doing something they're not supposed to, I'm not smacking their bottom or their hand or screaming at them. I'm actually just talking with them and telling them they can't do it and why they can't do it. Yeah. And then we're like, okay, now let's go have fun and be good. And they're fine. I was like, yeah. oh, I'm not their mother. But, you know, and kids always tend to act different around all oh, the, the fun friends. Yeah. And, yeah. But I also, I'm different in the way I am with kids and the way I feel kids should be raised. I said everybody has their parental things, but... You know, let's not pretend that some of the way the kids are behaving nowadays are also not the fault of the parent. When you, you yeah, I, it's media. Yeah, well, and I will say this too because I always get so mad when I see people say things like, "Well, I was spanked with the belt as a kid and I turned out okay," or "I was given the switch," and I think, you know, you weren't. You were not. You didn't turn out okay. If you think it's okay to beat, I don't care. I don't care how much it is to beat another human being. It's not okay. You are lacking in skills to be able to influence someone else. And so when I hear people say that, you know, the whole old school, you have no idea how I was yeah. beaten as a kid and I'm fine. You yeah, know, you're not, you're not. My it's not normal. Week, it's a great tool, it worked. And I'm like, mm -mm. I totally agree with you. I say that all the time when I see somebody say something, I'm like, mm -mm. I agree with that. Like, oh, yeah, it worked. I learned my lesson because I, I didn't, I did it. I was like, like, you know, like, I just sit there, like, I don't agree with it. So here's the thing. I, maybe I'm a, like, you know, I'm much like yourself. I don't go on the bandwagons. I have my own independent opinions and I'm mm -hmm. not afraid to say it. And I might get hate and I might get bullied and I have. Yeah. But. Um, you know, I mean, there's just so much to, to talk about on the subject, you know, we would probably break Instagram, but I'm just saying like, you know, <laughs> yeah. the conversation is so amazing and beautiful and inspiring and so, so much to touch on. Yeah. It's like, talk about it for, I mean, this is why we do what we do because yeah. you do what you do. That's, it's all interrelated and I do what I do and we, you know, we collaborate and, you know, we yeah. do these shows and stuff because, it needs to be talked about a lot and like different things come out and all of a sudden it's like, Hey, I had an aha moment or Hey, let's, Hey, this is a good way to like, you know, go about something. Or maybe if we just, I, you know, I so agree with the humanity thing. I just, I feel that as an empath person, I feel like I feel everything. And I think that's some of, you know, some of my, you know, like, you know, your you know, gift, a your certain gift. Way. Yeah, when I'm feeling a certain way, it's not all my stuff. Mm -hmm. Sometimes other people's stuff and other people's energy, and it's taking a lot in. And I happen, and I know you have to be careful with that. And I'm really, yeah. not, I try to help. I try to be Superman, so I just take in too much on top of my own, and then I'm just yeah. like, you yeah. Know? So, yeah. But you know, to you know, like, like I said, to, to because we could talk for hours. But you know, and I love talking to you, and everything you said, I just yeah. love.
because you just had an amazing insight and um, the view and the perspective. And, you know, I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, what are some of the things besides, you know, getting back our humanity that you think that, I mean, I feel like, I mean, like I said, I have the campaign that we have a new campaign, Voices Amplified. I think I sent it to you you know, um, to make a video if you wanted to, like, because I feel like social media is also a big problem. They don't do anything. They don't do enough to stop it. They don't do enough. But our leaders in the government don't either. So, like, mm -hmm. what are some of your uh, thoughts on that as far as really making bigger dents and, like, make it mandatory in school to do things, make it mandatory to have a program at work, make it mandatory. Like, what are some things that you think, you know, we can do to you know tackle this in a harder way that like it seems like nobody cares and bullying is a major epidemic yeah well i think a lot of it has to do with what they see their parents doing you know and i think we as adults need to take some responsibility if we're sitting at home using every slur there is and screaming and yelling and othering everybody i mean that's what that's what this country's become we've we've all become sort of a part of one of the other groups on some level. Um, I think it's time for adults to have, to have a wake up call, you know? And I used to say, and it's, it's a terrible thing to say, but I did and I will own it. This was pre, pre COVID. I used to say, you know, I think what it's gonna take to snap this country out of all this hatred is a natural disaster. It's not the first time I've heard it. And I used to say it just like that flip, easy. Even though in natural disasters, things are destroyed. It's horrible. But I knew that when this country, when a natural disaster would hit, this country would get back to, it would right itself, right? And then it just stopped writing itself. We just stopped doing it. And that is really a scary place to be. It's scary to hear that there are leaders, whether they are still in office or not, that are still stoking the fires of hatred and, and encouraging civil war. There's, you know, you've got, division happening on every side. I mean, let's just call it what it is, everywhere. I don't care who you're talking about. They're all using divisive language. And so I think that at some point, adults need to take some responsibility. And like I mentioned earlier, be really intentional with how we communicate and the choices that we make. I hear people say all the time, you know, I didn't grow up with this he, she, her, they, I can't do it. And I think, are you kidding me? I won't say fuck in a church. So if I have that much control, you certainly can have a, an ounce of humanity for someone who is asking you for respect, yes. asking you for decency. They're not even asking you for money like they do to me at a church, right? So, sorry, I'm fired up. So I think that the first part of this yeah. is, is really taking responsibility as adults. We've got, we've got kids doing shitty things because something shitty is going on at home, period, right? Or parents are attention, so the kids are just like, woo -hoo, I'm yeah. gonna do what I want. And if the kid thinks it's normal to other someone because they hear their parents screaming at the television, screaming at each other, screaming about whoever it is, the kid's gonna go to school and he's just gonna be a dick, right? And so all of that to say, I think it starts with us. I'm sorry about the cussing, um, but I, I, I think that it starts with taking responsibility. I do think that we need a shot in the arm in all of our spaces of leadership. Start from the top. There are expectations that we have of people who are in government roles. I have expectations of people who are in my school district. I have expectations of police officers and their behavior. Like it is time to take these leaders into account. And I really mean that. Like to actually say that we have, you know, expectations of how our kids are treated. And when I hear about a three-year-old in preschool who is kicked in the head, I mean, what in the world are we doing? Number one. And number two, where are the leaders in the room? Like how did this guy get through the vetting system, right? And so all of this to say, I think that there should be expectations and they should be humane expectations. I don't care how much a company makes. I don't care how many people they employ. I don't care how long they've been on a force. I don't care how many times they've been, you know, 
given some kind of accommodation. I don't care. If we as human beings say humanity first, that's it, humanity first, and we have expectations that we hold leaders, whatever that looks like, leaders in a school, leaders in a, you know, a community, leaders in the, the police department, leaders in our government, doesn't matter. I think if we're really clear that it's got to be humanity first, I think that's when we'll start to see change happen. And it can't just come from one group. It can't just come from one side of an aisle. It can't. It can't be a slogan. It's got to be a, a universal choice to put humanity first. And so, you know, I know I'm pie in the sky about this, but I'm certain about it. No. I mean, I it's... I think you're absolutely right. And I mean, and everything you're saying, I, you know, it's thoughts in my head, you know, I, there's just a lot of performative activism out there and a lot of performative speeches and a lot of uh, everything is political now. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I think we're going around in a lot of circles and getting nowhere because we're just, mm -hmm. and uh, so like you said, until I think things start, I, I don't know if there's been real change in uh, many years, mm -hmm. you know. Um, there's still a lot of things that everyone always says they're going to do this, this, and that, and I still have not really seen it. Mm -hmm. The full capacity that I think it needs to be. Um, so, yeah, I think we have a lot of work to do, and even more so after this pandemic, and, um, you know, because of this pandemic, and it's really technically not over. So uh, I think there's just going to be probably one of the most massive cleanups that we've probably ever seen in this lifetime anyway. So mm -hmm. um, I, I love, thank you so much. I was so looking forward to this show and thank you so much for being on. I'm definitely having you back because Yay. we need to have even more conversation and more in depth and touch in other areas. And I think it's so important to do so. And, you know, um, we leave it up on here. We put it on YouTube because a lot oh. of people, time zones and they watch it later so you know we'll promote it that way as well but thank you so much for taking the time and doing it. i appreciate you i adore you i think you're fabulous and yeah. well i love you and i'm glad i got a chance to be a part of it and thank you for your grace when i lost my mom and i didn't have that in me it was that day if you remember and i was like are you gonna hate me for this <laughs> i can't I mean, make it no question no brainer i mean yeah we all have emergencies and and, yeah. and well, things that happen. I so felt for you that day, mm -hmm. and I you did. And like think about me on any level whatsoever. It's not a big. Deal. I mean, I don't care if I was like you know Oprah. <laughs> you know, like if that happens and somebody had to like, I'm yeah. like, I gotta come anyway. You know, I mean, please. You know, I, I'm glad you're doing better and. Yeah. I, my heart was really hurting for you. So, you know, I mean, I'm glad you're doing better. And like I said, I, I, just, I, I love and adore you. And I, I hope to get to meet you soon in person. But I know. Now, you will. Yeah. I mean, we'll, LA's home. You will. Yeah, definitely will. But for now, you know, we'll do our, you know, our virtual and our phones. And, the, you know, yeah. for, we'll just do it that way. But I, 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 I do want to have you back on. Thank you cool. again. Um, have a beautiful weekend. And Thank I will. You. And I will talk to you soon. All right, friend. Humanity first. Yes. See you later. Thank Bye -bye. you, Dana. Bye.